we are back with some more preseason Kha'Zix. How are we doing, guys? Today, we're showcasing more of the Hydra Rush with a more refined build. We're running Conqueror, and we're trying out an R Evo style of Kha'Zix instead. This item is so good that Riot are already nerfing it, so give it a try before they do just that. If you guys are new here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Drop a like if you enjoy my content. It helps me out a lot, and I'd appreciate it. But without further ado, Let's go crazy with the Ravenous Hydra. Alright, here we go. This is a Hydra Rush game. I know, uh, I think last video I still did Hydra Rush. I can't even remember, honestly. But uh, yeah, this item is so good, man. It's so good. And I hope this game will show you why. I really, really enjoy this setup. Uh, this is a, I don't know, it's a ranked game I played in. I have no idea. I think it's like around Diamond 2-ish, something like that. And I'm just going to say, like, this page is probably just insane. It's probably insane, yeah. And hopefully you can see uh, why exactly. So we're running the Conqueror with Inspiration 2nd. So basically, we want Inspiration 2nd so we don't have to buy boots. And we get the Futures Market as well so that we can uh, get the components a little easier. Like, you know... Hopefully the Futures Market does its job at like getting us the Hydra components and stuff. Uh, and yeah, the Conqueror is really important because we don't have Lethality early, uh, early on. So that's why we kind of need Conqueror to stay relevant within the game, in the early game. Because when you build Hydra, uh, you don't have Lethality and not having Lethality is really... It just feels kind of awful with other, uh, with other runes in my opinion, but you know... To each their own and you know conqueror just seems to me the most consistent anyway i'm gonna see a good gank opportunity here i'm not even going for my top side camps i find the nar here i'm gonna flash on him and i'm gonna give him one more auto a q and w just to be safe and miss it for style so yeah <laughs> now we go back into our camps um notice that i am running the red jungle pet this time just something i'm testing out and also i think it's really really valuable uh for Kha'Zix in general I mean 4% max health damage it's not crazy but I think it is um important if you want to maximize your damage especially against champs that are going to be a little more on the beefy side of things like uh you know bruises and stuff like that bruises tanks very uh, solid option otherwise uh for jungle pets I honestly think uh you can probably go anything for Kha'Zix. I honestly, I think the green pet is is fine as well. Uh, just for that shield and stuff. But, you know, um, we're just going to have to test out some stuff. We've already done the blue pet and, you know, we'll, we'll try some more stuff out. Uh, unfortunately, Zareth is going to get dove and he doesn't flash to where I wanted him to go. Because if he flashed where I was, uh, I would have been able to save him. But he doesn't. Unfortunate. And I have no no real other choice but to go for my camps here. And yeah, not really too... Actually, no. Uh, something neat I, I've kind of noticed is that you can kind of track the enemy jungler based off how many stacks they have of, on their uh, jungle item, right? So you can see now that I have 32 stacks on my jungle item. Which that basically means that I have 24 CS, right? And when I take this camp, it's going to be 28 CS. So yeah. Just something to keep in mind, it's kind of useful. You can see that the Dino has 31. Uh, and yeah, it's just a, a overall kind of handy tool to kind of point out what camps the enemy jungler has done um, in the early game. So yeah, definitely useful. You can see she's taken my uh, top side, uh, my bot side jungle here. She has 36 TS, so yes, she's basically taken my Krogs and my Raptors, which kind of sucks. So. I do have the TM at now, and I really don't have any other choice but to go topside and try and look for camps on her side of the map. So, yeah, not really the greatest scenario for me, not gonna lie. Um, because I went for that early gank and, you know, kind of wasted a bit of time trying to save the Xerath and stuff, uh, I'm kind of slow with my pathing, um, and that kind of punished me right there and then. So good job to Diana for actually punishing me for that. It's going to be a huge top diff, though. Um, I guess Riven's pretty good in this <laughs> in this season. I'm um, assuming the Spirit of Shojin and the Hydra's going to be really good for her, but... Yeah, no. Uh, going to be able to 
get back my lost Krugs and Raptors by taking hers, and that's really nice. Guys, look at how fast we do Krugs. Oh my god. I'm so glad they got rid of that stupid, like, dividing thing, and only mini Krugs uh, spawn instead of, like, the like the medium Krugs. Oh my god. It's so nice clearing Krugs uh, right now, because they don't take, like, five years to clear. Anyway, I'm going to look for something in... The mid lane, this guy's sliding all over the place, and I'm like, well, maybe I can potentially do something here. Um, I'm waiting for him to dash through this minion. He does indeed dash through it, but he actually hits the tornado, he goes for the ulti, and he kills the Zerath and actually flashes out. This is really unfortunate, but he's getting kind of greedy. He's trying to knock me knock me up and trying to you know, just hit all the Qs, but he runs back into uh, isolation, and I end up finishing him off with one Q. <laughs> Unfortunately, Diana's here, and she's gonna keep chasing me. I just ult just to just to be safe. I don't even think I needed to ult there because my leap was coming up, but I just did just to be sure. Wasn't really paying attention, and unfortunately, she's gonna take my top side camps, and there's nothing I can do about it, uh, which is unfortunate. So yeah, I do evolve the R here. This is something I'm testing out. I'm testing out the R evolve with Conqueror. Uh, just because, like, our evolve is so valuable, and I'm gonna see if, like, it has any synergy at all with the Hydra. Um, and my answer is yes, it does, and think of it like a somewhat Gore Drinker playstyle, except you do more damage because you have the Hydra giving you more AD, and yeah, it's actually really, really fun. I really enjoy this setup, it's so much fun, and, you know, it has a lot of value because you can extended fight so well. Uh, with the R Evolve, with the Conqueror, and with the Hydra. So, you'll be seeing that uh, eventually. There's really, like, this build is great at extended fights. You have so much sustain, uh, and overall it's just so much fun. Right, guys, try it out. They're already nerfing this item, by the way. Did I tell you that? They're already nerfing Hydra. <laughs> because it's so good. And, I don't know, man. Use it while you can. I'm sure the nerfs won't be that crazy, but... If they remove the stacking mechanic, it's going to be tragic, uh, but you know, overall, it's just a very good item. So I'm going to look for a gank here. Yumi jumps on me, Swain flashes out. I lose vision of him, so I can't actually get an ISO Q off, and then I spend a lot of time trying to kill him. And now I'm 1 HP. Jin is actually going to flash, but as he flashes, I'm going to use my R Evolve. Unfortunately, I'm still within his, uh, with his, within his range, so I can't actually get away from him, and there's nothing we can really do about that. I, uh, yeah, unlucky, mate. <laughs> we kind of just die because it's nothing really. Nothing I could have, nothing I possibly could have done there. I mean, I guess I could have, like, ran backward and juked him throughout the bushes. That would have been an option, I guess, but I just, you know, I thought I could potentially get away because I had R. But unlucky. So, gonna come up here. I don't have the Hydra yet, unfortunately. I'm very close. Uh, shouldn't have, I honestly shouldn't have bought that. Uh, vamp scepter because it's putting me in debt for no reason um guys with futures market you don't want to use your debt if it's just like a, a small useless component like the vamp scepter right because that means you have to pay like an extra 50 gold the next time you want to buy uh, because you're in debt you know so just keep that in mind uh so i'm trying to go onto the nair here but we don't get any cc off and he's gonna get away unfortunate i believe i could get the hydra now actually I, th I think I can. Uh, yeah, the high. Uh, sorry, not the Hydra. The Diana clears the dragon, so I'm like, okay, can I get a, can I get a Raptor camp here? No, I can't. It's already taken, and so my options here are to go back top or to go Herald. But in my opinion, Herald is very unsafe. Uh, I settle for top lane, use my Arvov to go in. We all know how good Arvov is for ganking. He gets away with a flash, and I don't have the auto range to actually auto him unless I use my Void Assault to get closer, which I do, and I pick up a kill. Very juicy. In the meantime, we see the Diana on the bot side and the Yasuo, so you know what that means. It's a free Herald. You guys, you're going to take advantage of this. Um, you always want to make sure you're taking advantage of positions of enemy on, enemies on the map. And because everyone's bot side, it's basically a free herald because no one can come up and contest me. Something I could have also done here is I could have gone into the mid lane and pushed that out. I would have got a chunk of gold and experience. Um, I could also go invade the Diana because her camps would be up by now. 
she hasn't been topside in a while, and we all saw that her raptors were gone, but unfortunately she shows up here and does what I was planning to do, which is push the wave, and then Xerath TPs, so I miss out on all that golden experience. This is extremely greedy, this is terrible by the way, don't do this. I have no ulti, and I'm trying to contest the raptors against the Diana. I do manage to get them, but uh, I'm just going to drop way too low, and Xerath's going to miss all his abilities, and I'm going to go down. Just way too risky for me. Uh, but the Xerath does do a good job and picks up the Diana, well played. And he's going to try to run away right now. Nara misses his ulti. I don't even know what the fuck he was aiming at. Probably to China or something. Um, and my Riven's going to go pop off because she's really, really strong. And they're going to actually pick up the kills there. So that's nice. We finally get the Hydra. And we also get a Dirk as well. So we're really strong. And by really strong, I mean really strong. Because that is a lot of AD, guys. That's like 100 AD right there. And we also get the lethality, which means we're going to be bursting a lot more. The, the Serrated Dirk is really important for damage in the early game. So I'm kind of thinking about just rushing the Dirk and then going into the Hydra. But I don't know. I'm not really quite sure uh, where I stand on it right now. It's a bit awkward not having lethality early. But the, pe the benefits that you get with the Hydra later on are just so, so damn good. I don't know. We got some stuff to test out, guys. And in the meantime, Hydra Rush is very, very comfortable, uh, in my opinion, uh, so long as you take the Conqueror with it. If you don't take Conqueror, you kind of, uh, I, I do feel like you miss out on damage, but uh, it is what it is. So, I get spotted here. Diana's actually going to uh, Ego challenge me here. I do have my ulti up now, so I know I can fight her quite comfortably, but I do jump out just in case, because I want to make sure I don't get bursted down and some stupid shit happens, so... I am able to chase her down with my last two casts of R Evolve. Yasuo comes along, I'm going to try kite away from him. Look at that damage with the Conqueror and the Hydra and the Dirk. A lot of damage, we give him a little teabag because why not, that's Yasuo plays for you. <laughs> and yeah, just overall super fucking nice. Um, yeah, so because, I'll tell you why I jumped out of the way like that. If Diana hits the Q on me, which she almost did, uh, she can kind of like do a lot of burst all at once and I wasn't really sure whether or not I could survive that So that's why I went for the jump and that jump allowed me to dodge the Dyna Q Which means she has no way of re-engaging on me um, So yeah, very very uh, it, It's something you can do provided you jump within a safe distance to like re-engage and I mean I suppose I did now I'm pinging to look for the Jin here unfortunately Zerath just makes it painfully obvious because he drops a ward right in his face and then Jin immediately realizes something is up. Okay, let's not go through there, but he doesn't realize we're following him. He tries to go through the jungle. It's not really a safe place for you, buddy. And I'm going to flash on him for the shutdown. Um, I could have maybe trusted the Xerath and hoped that he hit the shots, but I didn't trust him. And I want that shutdown for myself, baby. Come on. We take that shutdown. We see the Diana here trying to look for the... I don't know what she's looking for, actually. Probably her lost dad or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at that damage, though. <laughs> Look at that damage. How nasty is that? Really nice. Yeah, right? I was like, wow. It was good. Actually feels really nice to deal that kind of damage um, with this Serrated Dirk and the Hydra getting stacked slowly. Um, unfortunately, Xerath is going to get cut down here. Unfortunate, gets shut down, but it's fine. We have the Diana dead, so I'm just going to try and start the dragon. And um, I'm assuming Dragon is a little faster to take now because the pets are so damn strong. But um, I don't know, that's just what it kind of feels like. I mean, look at it. The Dragon's just kind of exploding. Bam, we take that. <clears throat> and I'm going to try and use my Herald. There we go. I used it. It was running out. I had to do it. We know Jin has no sum, so I see a good opportunity. The Yumi's on me. I'm going to walk up to him. We're actually going to deal heaps of damage with the Hydra because of the minions. So the minions are actually enhancing our damage with the Hydra. Because we're using the W on them, and then the AoE on each of the minions deals damage to the Jin, I believe. I think that's how it works, I'm not really sure. But nevertheless, we deal so much damage to him, even though he's in isolation, and he just explodes. It's so beautiful, man. You gotta try this, it's so good. Oh my god. And uh, we currently have 23 stacks on the Hydra. I believe that means we're at about 12 AD, and 2% Omnivamp bonus for the Hydra. So... We're getting our stacks, uh, and it's just dealing so much damage right now. Look how fast we clear the raptors. Everything just explodes because of the Hydra AoE. And look, uh, it's Chemtech Drake, right? So we have these plants to work with. I'm actually going to use one of them now. Whee! Hello. 
Uh, that's so much fun, actually. I really love those plants. Um, gonna look for a chance to go on the Nar. He flashes out, but the Yumi's gonna follow up with the ulti. I lose isolation last second there because the minions walk up. Very unfortunate. He's got a bunch of armor, so my Q doesn't kill him. But the Yumi's gonna speed me up, and we're gonna be able to pick him off. And then I heal to full HP with the Hydra and clear the entire wave in one second. Oh my god, it's nasty. It's nasty. No, no, no. It's nasty. It's nasty, man. Try this out before it gets nerfed because it's getting nerfed. And, like, seriously, it's just so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I just, I just love this so much. Um, so, our second item is going to be the Mythic, and we pick up the Eclipse. The Eclipse is the best Mythic in slot for the Hydro Rush because, well, you're stacking Omni Vamp, and it's just, you, you're just never going to die, mate. You're never dying with this build, trust me. You have so much sustain, it's just unreal. And so we're going to go into our camps on the top side. I'm actually wondering what to evolve here, and I settle for the leap because why the hell not? I'm so fed, we may as well. And I don't really feel like I had a use for the other two evolutions. Um, <clears throat> suppose I could have gone like QEVO, uh, which would have been good for more DPS, etc. But I didn't really feel like I needed it because this build is all about dipping in and out with your R Evolve and just kind of, uh, you know, playing with them with your insane sustain. And it's just so fucking nice. Oh, um, w Evo is obviously a, a nice choice too. It's always useful for the slow and stuff. Very, very juicy. But, you know, we're going for the wings here and we also go for the Herald. Now, I should be dropping this mid because this is like the only place we can drop it at this point. Um, so, yep, I go and drop it mid, we get the tower. And kind of just looking for a good chance to like go in now. Enemy team is very squishy. I don't really know how this build would fare against like less squishy opponents, but I'm sure it's fine. Harold takes the tower. Jin is busy ulting, so I'm wondering, can I go and do something here? Jareth's gonna ult as well. I'm gonna R evolve in, find the Jin in isolation. Look at that damage. Mmm, juicy. I know we have a Yumi on us, but still wow. the damage <laughs> the damage is there. It's definitely there. Diana's gonna wonder where her dad is again. Um, she can't really find him. I'm gonna fail my double jump. Unlucky. And I'm gonna pick up the Diana as well. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I don't have a Yumi on me, but like still, you can feel the damage. It's really yes, you can. Really nice. You can feel the damage. It's just immaculate. We have 40 stacks on the Hydra, which means it's fully stacked, and that means we get a bonus of like 24 AD, which is very <laughs> fucking nasty. Uh, we use the. Uh, enhanced blast cone and we gank the Nara with the blast cone he just gets obliterated that's so much fun i okay if there's one thing i really like in this season it's the it's how they did the chemtech trek uh i think the chemtech trek is a lot of fun the, like the terrain in particular having enhanced plants is really really fun and i've been enjoying the blast cones thoroughly and um you can see there's a plant here and i'm like hey what is that plant is that like the vision one no it's actually the honey fruit plant so you can heal off that one. I, I think it drops more or something. Pretty handy. <clears throat> but yeah, the next item I'm going into is the Spear of Shojin. And I really like Shojin because it's just really well-rounded. You have a lot of CDR to work with, so uh, it'll lower the cooldown of your ulti. But more more importantly, it lowers the cooldown of your, uh, your basic abilities. So you're going to be able to be casting a lot more which means you have your W up more, which means you can heal more, and, you know, just stuff like that is really fucking good. See a good chance here, jump on the Jin. no isolation, doesn't really matter. I do get exhausted, which is unfortunate. I also get chain CC, but look how much I'm healing with the Yumi on me, with Conqueror stacked, with my Eclipse and my Hydra. I'm just not gonna die, it doesn't even matter. So, I get CC'd here, doesn't matter. I'm gonna jump on the Swain, heal up. Uh, Yumi's actually off me, I didn't realize this, but I'm gonna jump on the Naira, try to go for some juicy... <laughs> Montage play, but I just get uh, I just get exploded, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> I was getting very blood hungry though, but yeah, you know, just enjoying the build. We do pick up the Shojin, and oh man, I don't know. I just really enjoy Shojin. I'm not really sure if it's the best option. I, I don't think it is, but it's definitely a lot of fun, and it does work really well with the Bruiser type builds, uh, like this one. I'm really sure if you'd classify this. As no, I guess this is more like an Omnivamp healing bruiser build. Uh, you definitely... I don't... Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I wouldn't say Shojin is necessary, but it's definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> and I'm... Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty solid as a 
you know, a stat stick. The only problem is that it is quite expensive. Okay, so a fight is going to break out in the dragon pit. Uh, stuff's going to go down. Going to look for a chance to go in here. Unfortunately, I get, like, chain CC'd here. Uh, this is kind of bad by me, but it's fine. Uh, Diane ulti comes through. I'm going to just, you know, bide my time. I use my R to kind of reset. And I see a good opportunity to go on the Yasuo. Jump on the Yasuo. Kill the Yasuo. See Swain here, but I see these guys low. Jump on the Diana. Get a reset on Diana. Jump on the Swain. Fucking isolation damage with Conqueror. Oh my god. Yuck, yuck, yuck. It's nasty. It's nasty. I love this so much. <laughs> it's nasty, man. It's so fun to play. <laughs> yeah. Um, by far, one of my most... In, like One of the builds I really, really enjoy in the preseason right now. Um, and I kind of 100% recommend it. You guys should abuse Hydra while you can. Uh, I think even if they do nerf it, it'll be fine. Hydra has always been a very solid option for Kha'Zix and... You know, I think it was just really, really slept on before, but now with it getting more attention, even with even if they like nerf the stacking mechanic to the ground, it's gonna be fine, I think. So yeah, try Hydra Rush, it's great. Uh, you can go Q Evolve or Arivo, it doesn't really matter. I think Arivo is somewhat better uh, in the long run, but you know, it doesn't really matter too much. Get the Baron, get the Serrated Dirk, so we're finally getting some more lethality, uh, and I believe we're just gonna hold on to this Serrated Dirk. And instead, we go for the uh, we go for the Surrealders next. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, we only have like a another fight or two left in this game. It's a fairly fast game. But yeah, now we're just gonna try and walk up, see if we can do anything else. We see the Swain pretty overextended, but there's a ward here, so he's gonna back off here. Um, not really much we can do there. The right play here would probably be to just like uh, push topside or something. But I'm looking for kills, I'm looking for some action, being very aggressive. I'm going to start walking into the base now. And yeah. Hydra boys. Juicy. Very, very fun build. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do some more testing with the Shojin because I've yet to find like a build that really highlights it. If you get what I mean. So we'll have to give, uh, we'll have to give some uh, Shojin... Give some give Shojin some love. Anyway, fight's gonna break out here. Nothing crazy here. We're just going to pick up the Swain and I'm gonna push into the base to end the game. Overall, I'm actually having a lot of fun with preseason. I'm enjoying playing some tank Belveth as well. It's been a lot of fun. I'm gonna R evolve in here. Hey, what's up? Dodge the tornado. I'm gonna keep trying to go in here because there's nothing else to do. Um, I'm gonna chunk him down even though there's no isolation. And I'm gonna hit him with a double jump to end the game. Yeah boy, <laughs> yeah boy. <laughs> I like how I. Okay. Um, yeah, overall, really, really nice build. Give it a try, uh, especially with the Conqueror. It's definitely game changing with the Conqueror. Give it a try, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Um, like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I will come back with some more videos in the preseason. I'll see you next time. Peace.